Welcome to the Moms Making Six Figures podcast, where it's all about real women, real stories, real inspiration. And now your host and creator of Moms Making Six Figures, Heidi Bartolotta. Hi, Sharon. Hey, Heidi. So good to see you. <laughs> so good to see you. Thank you so much for doing this recording with me. Oh, thank you. I feel like it's an honor to be here and get to talk about things with you. I get to introduce my friend, Sharon Faustina. And Sharon is a, first of all, she's a mother, as you can see behind her, the children above her head. <laughs> um, and she's a CFO. And I would love it if you would start out by talking a little bit about your journey into just your career path. You've had an amazing career path. Will you just talk a little bit about it? Sure. Um, Yes. So fundamentally, I'm an accountant and became a chief financial officer. Um, But how I kind of fell into all that, I, um, I was working in in auditing for a big accounting firm for a long time. I knew that being a tax accountant was not my thing. Being a general accountant was not my thing. I really love people. And so I, I double majored in business and, and management so that I could spend more time with people. And then um, got married and had three kids and realized that to support my family, and I got divorced along that road, which is not ever fun, but a lot of people go through it, um, that I needed to step into a higher executive type ranks. So I um, got my master's degree, um, happy to say, from USC, wonderful network of people there, and um, and just moved along the corporate ladder till I became a chief financial officer. Um, I traveled through from the manufacturing company to another uh, manufacturing company, and recently, in the last year, moved to a, a life and transformation, uh, life, uh, start over, um, that's a hard one. I moved to a life and transformation company that does coaching certification and um, seminars and programs for people that are, are transforming their life and being better people. Um, so it really was a great fit for helping people, but then still applying all the accounting skills that I've had for years. So really happy I found a home in this job. So tell me, tell me about that journey, because I think that many people would think CFO and it's a pretty dominantly male role generally. <laughs> so, um, so talk about that. Talk about that in those terms, like as you were coming up and deciding that this is, Hey, this is what I'm going to do. Right. How did that, how did that happen for you? Well, I would say I had the similar struggles that you hear from a lot of women executives, um, that, uh, in the company as I was uh, auditing and then companies that I was working for that all the executive team was um, men and there weren't a lot of women there. And I kept doing my job and working harder and taking on more responsibility and and not moving up. And that was was disappointing and frustrating. Uh, And so I would work harder, um, but that wasn't always smarter to get where I was going. And so I realized I had to make a switch and, and really just put myself out there to have the CFO job. You know, not just just keep working and doing the work of a CFO without the title of the CFO. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I literally had a, a job where they told me, oh, help the other person, help this male that's in this job, do his job for him because he's not doing it. And he was getting paid more than me. He was less educated than me. He had less experience than me. And I said, you know, enough, enough. It's, it's not, you know, I can't just do the mom role at work where I'm taking care of people and not getting the the credit and the title and the pay of having the executive role. So I'm really happy in the the last year, two years, because I I jumped to the CFO in another job and then came here as CFO. But it also was an adjustment for this company in that they weren't used to having um, an internal CFO. And um, a lot of times in accounting, you're balancing between a controller level and a CFO level. And controllers are often women and they see you in that and they expect you to be in that. And so it's like Mm -hmm. their expectations compared to what your performance and making sure you're communicating in a way that they see you doing what you're doing and accept that you have that role and you're accomplishing that role. That was one of the biggest challenges, you know, and I think, I think we've gotten there. Um, but it's been, it's been a road. So 
I want to take you back to kind of the first part of the statement where you said that you were in a role and you weren't being recognized for that and ask you kind of what went on mentally for you that gave you that push to say, no, I'm not going to do this because you were making very good income. And obviously your family relies on that income. What gave you the push to kind of say, no, I'm going to do something else? Because I think CFO role or not, there's probably a lot of women out there that are in positions that would be similar, not the same, but similar, where they're maybe not being valued for the skill set that they're showing or maybe not being paid for the level of performance that they have. So talk a little bit about what went on with you mentally. I know you're a very, very, very big proponent of personal development and self-growth and self-development. So will you tell, will you talk us through kind of that process mentally for you? Um, Well, I I would say, you know, I think as women, we tend to be very committed and reliable and that, and that is something that is great. And it's a great skill set that we have. In that, we will almost box ourselves in into that reliable position where we're doing the same thing all the time. They know they can depend on us. And so we we just kind of sit there and do that. Um, I do agree where they say a lot of times men will get promoted for what they promise to do and women are waiting to be promoted for the actions they're already completing. Um, I found that that was the case quite a lot. Um, I kept waiting to be recognized, but I'm already doing all this. So why aren't I getting the credit? But I also wasn't um, tooting my own horn. You know, I was like, can't you see I'm doing it? Whereas my male counterparts, oh, I'm going to get that done. I'm going to get that done. And they're getting promoted and they never get it done. But it was, it's the way you present, right? It's the way that you're, you're really putting it out there and saying, no, no, I can do this and I can do more. Mm-hmm. And believing in yourself that you will, that you don't have to get the credit based on past performance, though you should, but that you can make all the promises and leap into where you're going and get those roles that you want. Um, it's really that belief in yourself. You're not, you're not fibbing. You're not exaggerating. You're saying I will do it. And you know, you will. And just changing that mindset or that really that vocabulary too, the communication yeah. of what you're going to accomplish. The way that you frame it. That's so interesting. It's such a, it's a, such an interesting way to look at it. I'd never really thought about it that way, that, that, proactive voice for yourself, basically. Yeah. So, okay. So, (laughs) you know, I'm going to ask you this question. Do you remember when you achieved six figures? (laughs) And it's funny because I was thinking that and I was like, gosh, I don't remember. And it should have been a really great milestone. Um, I'm sure it was later than I wished it was, you know, I, um, um, but I, I will say I'm not always as money motivated as I could be. Um, I'm really about making sure I, it's funny cause I control things. I make sure everything is handled. And so I've always made sure my income level covers what I want to do. So was I able to buy my house? Was I able to, you know, make sure my kids could do the sports they wanted to do? Of course, that's all that I focused on. Mm-hmm. Um, so the number hasn't ever really been a, been a thing. Um, I do think it was probably right around when my, um, When I had my first daughter or my first child, I have a daughter that's 17 now and twin boys that are 13. Um, And, and, you know, I I became a single parent back when 10 years ago. Um, So, you know, right then I was, what's my income by myself? Because my, my ex wasn't able to financially support. So how can I do this with three kids? And, and so the number has never been a number. It's just let's make sure it's enough of a number. Now I'm moving into not enough, not enough to survive. How much do I want to thrive and to have all the opportunities and the freedoms that I want? Um, That's really the next step in my being and my comfort with, with earning and, and having what I believe I, I deserve and what I, what I want. Um, You know, I think that's part of, you know, you accept things and right. And it's like, nope, it could be, everything I dream of. I just put it into action and make it happen. So, uh, so I don't have a date for you, but that's, <laughs> that's, okay. my, that's my path. With, I actually you know, love the- that explanation because I think it's very real. And for some people that are very money motivated, that number is really big to them. And for someone like you that 
is not. You just know what's happening because it's paying for what you know you need to care for, right? So that's actually a great yeah. answer. So, okay, so podcast or book, do you prefer one or the other? I would say I'm still a book person. Yeah. Um, I do love podcasts, but because books can be audible now, I stayed with books. Is there one that you would recommend? Is there one that you think our listeners should know about? There is a wonderful book that I am listening to just certain chapters of. Um, it's The Science of Getting Rich by Wallace Bottles. Mm -hmm. um, and I am listening to certain chapters of that book every day. It's like my morning meditation. And um, it just, it talks about, you know, um, living the life that, that you want and putting anything you vision to be can become into action. And, and so it's, it's very, it keeps my myself centered in my efforts every day. Um, mm -hmm. The second chapter I listen to, it's chapter seven, um, that jump around, but it's about gratitude, you know, that you, you have, um, you will have more by appreciating what you already have. And, and that when you, whatever, when you stop doing that, you lose things, you know, when you're not always giving more and getting more, you start losing what you already have. And I think you lose it because of lack of appreciation. It becomes, you know, standard, you don't think about it anymore. And then it, you don't notice it's slipping away. Whereas when you're always being really grateful for what you have and what you're aiming for, more comes. And so there's a lot in that book of, of what you get by giving and by really just participating every day. So what am I not asking you? You have a tremendous amount of wisdom and I think you know the demographic of our listeners, but we have a lot of younger, I would say younger women aspiring to six figures and then other women that would be more our counterparts. But what is there that you think, oh, I could convey this and it would be something that might benefit someone? Or kind of like one of those things you wish someone would have told you when you were younger. Yeah, exactly. In the world. <laughs> what would you have right. wanted to know? <laughs> right? Um, not, not that you would have listened, because that is one of the things that happens as we grow up. Um, it, we can't relate to some of the, the advice or, or mentoring recommendations that people give us until later. And then we go, wow, that would have been smart. Um, <laughs> I think it's to um, really to constantly work on yourself, because life's always changing and you're constantly growing. And so being working on yourself, not because anything's wrong, not that you're fixing anything. It's really because you're always growing. And so just like you, you exercise to keep your body growing and your body staying healthy because it's going to change, right? So is your whole being and what you, what you learn, what you know, where your mind is like, that's going to always change. So the more you keep focused on growth in that way, more will always come. So I think it's that, that you are an investment in yourself. Like what, it's not just other things out there, but truly what you do for yourself is important. Um, I love that you said that because I, I was listening to something a couple of weeks ago and it was actually a podcast and the woman said, you know, I hate it when women think that they need to be the same person as they were two years ago, five, 10 years ago, whatever that is, you should be growing. You should be changing. You should like different things. You should have different preferences because you're a different person today than you were five years ago, right? So I love that. It's so, that's a really powerful one. Um, and like the book concept, like there's chapters, you know, do you close this chapter and move on to the next chapter? Is it okay to go back and reread a chapter that you had before? Um, it can, you know, it might not have worked for a while, but they're like, wait a minute, there was some good things there. Let's go back. Um, cause a lot of times if something isn't perfect for that time in life, we want to cut it off and pretend it didn't happen or pretend it wasn't, you know, and it's like, no, we've learned, we become who we are from all those experiences. Yeah. So, but it is okay to close a chapter when it doesn't work and then move on for now. And, then and that gratitude piece, even being grateful for those things, even if they weren't great things, they still taught you lessons, right? So, yeah. Okay. So parenting wisdom, <laughs> what is your, what is your best parenting wisdom? Tell us you have twins for goodness sakes. Like. <laughs> yes. I'm outnumbered. Yes. Three is outnumbered. And when two at one time, definitely outnumbered. Um, I do, you know, parenting, I think, 
for me has always been number one priority. You know, my kids didn't get a vote on coming into this world. I brought them here, so I am here to make sure that I can hopefully help them become great people. Um, but uh, becoming great people is that independence. So how I can teach them some sort of independence, um, I think is really important. Um, I do tell them, you know, because now they're older, they're teenagers. You know, what you have now is not what you're going to have when you move out. Like, you need to figure that out. This is, you know, I took care of you in li- when you were little and you couldn't take care of yourself, but you're going to go out and you're going to figure it out and you're going to stumble and it's going to be hard, but it's okay. That's what we all do. Um, and I do try to make them a little uncomfortable at home so that they'll want to go set up their own home. Uh, <laughs> because it's, I, you know, at first they're like, we're going to live with you forever. And I'm like, well, no, no, that's no. not really my plan. And honestly, I want you to have a really great house that you make for yourself. And so you give them a lot of chores and then they don't want to do them. And I'm like, well, you do them now when you have your own house. If you want it to be messy or not do chores, that's on you. Go do that. (laughs) But independence, I think. So the wisdom is give them chores. (laughs) No, it's independence. (laughs) Oh, my gosh. Anything, anything else from your you've you've had a long career path. So is there anything, any kind of wisdom that you think? When you look around today at some of the women that you see maybe coming up in your company, for example, that you think, wow, this is different or this is a skill set that people maybe should pay attention to. Because I know it's it's different today than when you and I were coming up in our careers. Yeah. Um, I I think there's so much more opportunity I think um, younger people don't see it because they've had opportunity. They don't know the the restrictions that kind of were there um, 30 years ago when I went into the, into the um, workforce or even into college. You know, I literally had a college um, uh, person at school, you know, the college planner advisor, college advisor. And he said, why would you want to go off to college? You're pretty. You could just marry someone. Like no one would say that today, you know, because there is, that's just, you wouldn't say that you have every opportunity to have any kind of career. You know, they're there advising on so many career opportunities that they never used to talk about back then. Mm -hmm. Um, So really realizing that the world is open, it's been opened and become more open over the last, you know, 10, 20, 30 years. And that, and as, as women that have made it, that we need to help each other and not be pushing each other down because we had it hard. You should have it hard too. That's not the case. It's, it's really, we're here, we can help and we can help more people succeed. And that's really the, the way to go. That's so interesting that you said that. I actually hadn't thought about that for a really long time. Being in a career counselor's office has been a long time for me, but that's true. They really did almost kind of limit you in certain areas. And I thought I hadn't thought about that for a long time. There is a tremendous amount of opportunity, but it takes work, right? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for doing this with me. I know I pulled you away from what is a very, very crazy schedule that you have. So I really appreciate your time. It means a lot to me that you did this. So, yeah. Thank you so much. I appreciate being here. Thank you for listening to the Moms Making Six Figures podcast. If you enjoyed this podcast, please take a moment and leave a review on iTunes. To learn more about Moms Making Six Figures, head over to momsmakingsixfigures.com. That's right, momsmakingsixfigures.com. 